I just was having a conversation with a British person. What? I know. Who said that they think it's funny the way Americans don't pronounce the double R in horror. And then they left. <laughs> I have no idea what that means. What? What's the, what's the double R in How horror? How do you pronounce it? I don't know. I think it's that we say, like, we have a tendency to just say horror instead of horror. Oh, that's uh, yeah, true. I, gu- I guess so. Regionally, yeah. Yeah. Not on the East Coast. <laughs> no, no. Not where we enunciate. I would say the majority of Americans say horror, and, and, and there, there's like a little apostrophe in between all the R's. <laughs> where the hell does a British person get off talking, talking about to R's. us about dropped R's? I know. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Come on. It's not right. I do need capital and votes. Want to know why? I have a dream that one day every person in this nation will control their own destiny. This is episode 346 of Insert Credit, where our Congress is a panel of video game experts, our Bill of Rights is a list of questions I wrote yesterday, and our national anthem is a horrible buzzer. I'm Alex Jaffe, and my favorite U.S. president is William Henry Harrison, because he knew when to leave you wanting more. Oh my. Uh, I'm Tim Rogers, and my favorite U.S. president. It's George Goddarn Washington, number one, baby, number one, number one, number one, number one, number one. He was the only president who, you know, he Goddarn killed people. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, he Goddarn killed somebody, right? You know he did, and you also know that that man he killed was definitely British. <laughs> and uh, these days we talk about can a president be a criminal? Is it okay for a criminal to be a president? This guy murdered. And he became the president. <laughs> this guy walked into the White House with six pack abs stained with blood. And that, the, the god darn bloody finger the streaks uh, of blood across his abs are what inspired the god darn flag. Okay. Yeah. So that's my president. Yeah, his uh, his left peck. Somebody got some uh, shots in, and he just murdered them to death. Exactly. <laughs> well, I'm Brandon Sheffield, and it's hard to choose a president exactly. that you like. That's why you got to try doing so as a joke. So Washington was a was a pretty solid one. Uh, if I choose Lincoln, then uh, Lincoln's cool. Then uh, our guest is out of luck here. Perhaps. Oh, <laughs> uh, d- d- don't underestimate our guest. You got one? I have faith. I feel like a lot more of them should have been assassinated, to be yeah, honest. Oh, so absolutely. I, I, I think am, uh, it should have. I, I'm, I'm choosing Lincoln because, number one, civil war on the side of the North. Number two, uh, died. Um, <laughs> yeah. Which which, so cool. which a lot of our pres- – it's, it's something that a lot of our presidents could – Back of the head, too. <laughs> yeah. Back yeah, of the, the god darn head. Getting assassinated is something that I think many of our pres- presidents, f- former and current, should consider. Uh, yeah. So think about it. Yeah. I'm not going to tell anybody uh listening to my live streams or podcasts to go out there kill the president. Um but you know, if any bus yeah. drivers happen to uh know where he gets his Starbucks or whatever, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to come out on a recorded podcast and say that I'm pro assassination. I'm not yeah. going to tell anyone to kill the president. But if a president is listening, I'm advising them to consider getting killed. Yes, yeah. exactly. Like, take your destiny into your own hands. Right. Manifest something for yourself. We've got a guest this week standing in for Frank Cifaldi. We have got Polygon's own video editor, Simone de Rochefort, is back on the podcast. SDR. To, uh, celebrate the 4th of July. It's Did me. you say Polygonzo? Mm. I sure did. Are you Polygonzo in over there? Shoot, that would be so cool. Why have we never said that before? You're yeah. a Polygonzo, Polygonzo journalist. journalism. Oh I'm my going God. Polygonzo. Are you polygonzo in over there? <laughs> I'm polygonzoing out. <laughs> You're in the polygon zone. I'm polypogging out. What? My favorite president, I think, is Richard Nixon because he was really in it for the drama, and I can appreciate yeah. that. That's uh, true. And, and when confronted, he didn't say, I'm not a criminal. He said, I'm not a crook. Yeah, which that's is so like cool. exactly what a criminal Man. would say, right? <laughs> that's right. Like that's yeah. that's the criminal's word for criminal. And he has a very emulatable um voice, which is oh, fun. Yeah. <laughs> if you're a president and you don't have one of those, 
what what'd you even get there for yeah, our yeah. jowliest president don't you don't <laughs> you right. get there on purpose to subject the people of the world to broadcasted messages uh, featuring your voice isn't that why you get there as the president I think you're really on to something because when i think of all the presidents that we have recorded on uh, have audio recordings of they do all have a funky way of talking don't they, they? sound yeah. nuts yeah. as heck right yeah <laughs> They sound uh, if so. If anybody wants, if anybody listening to this wants to become the president, first of all, mm, consider KYS. Uh, <laughs> uh, but also, uh, if <laughs> uh, if you want to become the president, maybe uh, you know, workshop workshop a little voice. Yeah, Adam Sandler used to play NHL ninety three on the Sega Genesis while workshopping his uh, Saturday Night Live characters. So maybe put on a hockey game. Nice. And uh, and just start making little Nicky voices or whatever, and then <laughs> before you know it, there you are getting accused of being creepily old and basically dead by millions <laughs> of people <laughs> from sea to shining sea. Right? Even even Obama's got uh, a particular cadence that is He's got yeah. that Hawaii accent. That's a good yeah. accent. You that listen not, to that, it, and then you're just like, yeah, that's that guy. That's him talking. Yeah. The Chicago Hawaii accent. It's like it's it's beautiful. We have no choice but to let him be clear. That's a case of a guy who has That's a true. really he had a really good voice. A lot of these people which is, you know, can stand in for having a really goofy voice and a pinch. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. And it, it'll do. And a remarkable cadence as well. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. About 150 words per minute. Or per, yeah, about 150 words per minute, I think. It's more than 145, maybe a little slower than 150, something like Everyone that. Everyone says I talk slow, and I guess it's true. In the interest of democracy, uh, last week I decided that Brandon was our winner, but oh. uh-huh. I received an outcry of protest from listeners saying Tim deserved the win for that Wait, last really? episode. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Two, two people mentioned it, so that, I didn't, that's I didn't, uh, I didn't know anybody actually uh, – Listen to this show. Much it was because about it. <laughs> <laughs> it's your slime, your slime thing that you no, did. Because I talked about uh, killing slimes while denying war crimes. Uh, yeah, the rhyme should have cinched it for the you. Slime the rhyme. Dragon Quest Broadway musical. So I'm giving you the opportunity to introduce a first topic at the start of the show, Tim. Mm-hmm. Unless mm-hmm. you would prefer to defer to Brandon. Well, does Brandon have one? No, I totally forgot. Mm-hmm. Dane won no opportunity. Uh, should I? Uh, uh, me don't know what to do. Actually, I have- I'm trying. I'm workshopping my president voice. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, uh, I got one actually. If you want it, is it cool? It's kind of cool, but it's more of a topic of discussion than it is a question. Oh, I'll take it. All right. Someone on the on the Instant Credit forums was talking about getting into into HD games after having lapsed for a long time, and the the way that they did so was to purchase an Xbox One for like $50 and then go to a used game store and buy a bunch of games from the last 10 years for like $5 each because uh-huh. nobody wants an Xbox One and nobody wants to buy those games. But like you can get all the stuff uh, basically because the Xbox One still plays everything yeah. for a, a, a cheap price. So I guess that is my topic of conversation is the perhaps unsung... Uh, not hero, but um, helpers of the 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 modern era. Obviously, Tim, you would say just get Steam uh, and a computer. But yeah. uh, oh, the virtues of coming into a video game years after the fact is that what oh, we're yeah, talking yeah. about? Or or to a a platform where you can still get all the stuff. It's just like slightly less good. I was kind of thinking about this in terms of like back back in the day, we used to have a a handheld version of every big game or whatever. And uh, we don't have that. It was always the Chibis version. It was anymore. Yeah, we had a little version, Chibis's yeah. version. But in but now you sort of get that in that say there's a PS5 version of something you could get the PS4 version for a lot cheaper. Uh, but with the Xbox One, you're getting even deeper into the cheap territory, so you can get all the Yakuza's or whatever. You know. So the question here is, when is it better to get the worse version? Something like that. There wasn't really a question. It's more just something I thought was interesting because I hadn't considered someone in 2024 picking up an Xbox One and a bunch of cheap games that aren't exactly old. Yeah. Because we I sort mean, of have uh, and uh, we have an unusual period in console life cycles that I don't think has happened before where we have two consoles from two major platform holders that 
are basically drafting alongside each other continuously. Like the the PS4 and and the Xbox One are still totally fine. You could just get almost all the new games on them. Did the forum user say when they had like stopped playing games before picking it up again? It was uh, like Xbox 360 era. Uh, Okay, cool. Okay, so they they basically missed out on uh, Xbox One era stuff. Mm-hmm. And and Series X era. I'm assuming this person is is like closer to my age than not. Um, I so believe that's it the just, case. It just kind of sounds like, in my opinion, it sounds like they just didn't miss God darn nothing, and they should just get a Mister and play Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis games. Uh, <laughs> Maybe they missed Red Dead Two. RD Two. Mm-hmm. I'm looking at Xbox One games, trying to figure out what's going on out there. I do think it's a cool idea, though, and it's great that it is possible to obtain a console that you know was just like a generation ago and physical copies of all those games and speaks to why physical copies are important yeah that's i think not the era that i am looking to explore i just got one of those little like Anberic, uh like game boy things that has like all of the like the nes the game boy color the game boy advance on it and all of those like games from when theoretically when i was a kid but when i didn't have any consoles because i was a kid right i wasn't allowed to guy to buy those so it's very cool yeah you can like get final fantasy 15 on your xbox one that's not that old that's funny i like that it's it's weird. Like you can't get Halo Infinite, but you can get a lot of other stuff. Like most of That's their stuff. It's kind of an affront to God, but I love it. It's just <laughs> on there. Yeah. So you you can just go all the way back to the Xbox One that truly nobody wants. Buy it for peanuts and get yourself Which a Xbox whole. Which Xbox One did this guy get? Did he get the the big original? Did he get the S or did he get the X? So I feel like they're all probably pretty cheap right now. Wound, right? wound up getting the X, oh, the X because nice. it was uh, it was sixty dollars instead of fifty dollars. I believe oh, that actually kind of rules. Yeah. So like, because that's like it's the best Xbox One, and it's just barely worse. Huh? I mean, it is worse, yeah. but it's just barely worse, and all the games basically run. It's it's just it's really Titanfall weird. Fall two. Titanfall two. two uh, mm-hmm. You can still play stuff. Uh, man. I don't want to sound like I'm trying to say that video games, uh, there's not good video games lately because there's tons of really good, especially indie games lately. But there was a lot of great stuff that came out pre-2020 indie wise that was all on everything, including uh, the Nintendo Switch. Games like Hollow Knight that came out on the Nintendo Switch yeah. and ran at a low resolution or whatever. Uh, you can get that on your Xbox One X and play it at yeah. 4K. uh uh, you know, and it looks yeah. nice. And well, I feel know. like at least at least fifty percent of new AAA video games are still on Xbox One and PS4. Yeah, L- like if you wanted to buy something today, you could buy a uh, like a slightly worse version of it, and you would not notice <laughs> most <laughs> likely, unless you're unless you're you like a real still play f- Fortnite online on an Xbox One, right? I reckon. All right, I mean, I, you can't I, play Overwatch One. They they disconnected that. Yeah, it's dead. Yeah. Looking this up reminded me that Sunset Overdrive exists. Game's all right. One game that was Xbox One exclusive, um, but now you can play it on the other Xboxes is uh, Recore. And play that weird, weird, creepy uh, sixty FPS Gears of War One remaster. Huh. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. smoke that. You can play Red Dead Redemption Two at a decent. Uh, uh, 30 FPS uh, and a pretty nice resolution on the Xbox One X as well. I hope that answers your question, uh, random form user. Since Super Mario Brothers, have we ever come up with anything better than pixelated fireworks to congratulate a player for completing an objective? Ooh, what about Big Loot? Yeah, Big Loot is a hot one. But when you open Big Loot, you kind of get an effect of pixelated fireworks sometimes. They'll be like sparkles and stuff. Yeah. Sometimes it's big old confetti, like a pinata yeah. blowing up. Yeah. Which is like the paper version of fireworks. That's true. Yeah. Everybody wants to promote safety in their video game graphics now. Right? <laughs> that's the rise of confetti. Yeah, that's yeah. it. So some, some form of explosion is probably is the main thing. The human mind yeah. craves the reward explosion. Yeah. What about why, like why a- Why do you link explosion with achievement? It's sexual. What about just a cool rotating sword? Uh, like you could uh-huh. get, for, for completing an objective, you get just like a cool rotating weapon. That's 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 something. That's I, I don't cool. know if I like it more than an explosion, though. 
I'd like to see a 3D model of a sword, sure. It's not better than an explosion, for sure. No. I go, I got an NFT, great. It's <laughs> uh, it's not terrific. What if you just got like a, 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 a dog that was really happy to see you at the at the end of an of the objective. Would that be better than an explosion? It might be. A physical dog. A dog spinning around. Spinning yeah, just a dog around. like spinning, spinning, Does spinning. Does a little flip. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I got home the other night and my baby girl dog was there and I just decided to not crouch down and pet her <gasps> because I wanted to see how many times she would spin before stopping. Mm-hmm. <laughs> she got up to, I, I kid you not, 48 before I said, all right, forget this. <laughs> I, just, I would, she was going and just like like she does this like jumping prancing twisting spin and boy dogs just stand in there going <laughs> but girl dogs just like jumping like a donkey it's weird it's very funny she doesn't stop so i i, I don't have a conclusive i don't have a, a number i don't know what do you the like maximum. that more than fireworks Oh, absolutely, yeah. Okay. Imagine sliding down the flagpole in Super Mario Brothers, and when you go into that little castle, there's a tiny Pomeranian sprite there that's just kind of flipping <laughs> instead of the fireworks going off in the background. I kind of dig that. Be really that's good. not bad, yeah. Like that'd be all right. Yeah. And I think, uh, barring that, if I could just see my main character flossing at the end. <laughs> oh, that's important, yeah. 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 Yeah, Fortnite really cracked that. Or dabbing. Or pogging. Or pogging. Pogging out, yeah. What what is what is what is pogging? Don't do. <laughs> oh no! That's a can like of worms. Visually. <laughs> okay, I, I new mean, topic. Like, Let's clear the board. What is pogging? Now we know what pogging is. <laughs> is it that? It's when you go. It's that dumb yeah. face. Yeah. yeah. The YouTube face. Yeah. It's when you put your eyes really wide, making O mouth. It's when oh. you. It, it's when you realize that in many many years you will be canceled and replaced with a lizard. <laughs> it's the face you make. <laughs> okay. It's the face you make when you yeah. uh, receive the message from the future informing you yeah. of that. Face of the fleeting nature of fame. Mm-hmm. Nice. Yes, nice. beautiful. I don't know who like 90% of the guys in my Twitch chat uh, are, like the faces of the guys. I don't know who most oh, of them are. Oh, you know 10%? That's really high. I know, uh, I, I personally know Alex Jabaley, who is the Jabated face. But then okay. again, I think I think thousands of people personally know that guy. He's that kind of guy, um, you know, whether whatever that means. Uh, but I, I I personally know and have met that guy many times. I've had breakfast with that man at a Las Vegas uh, buffet. You know, not Brad. I don't know what, you know with an emoji, with an emoji superstar, right? One of the most famous. Emojis. I didn't know he was an emoji. He's he's yeah. making a face in the emoji. Uh, so now I'm imagining finishing a level in Super Mario Brothers. You hit that flagpole. And then the screen splits so that half of it becomes an extreme close-up of Mario's face as he's pogging while <laughs> sliding his way down the flagpole. And he says, toasty. <laughs> yeah, toasty. Toasty face is relatively close to pogging face. Yeah, yeah. Toasty might be the original pogging kids. Let me turn my chair backwards. I think I've <laughs> mentioned this on I've mentioned this before on live streams, and I've mentioned this in my Discord, but I'm gonna go ahead and mention it out loud in the podcast. I was at a Walmart in New Hampshire. Oh my God. And a young boy with an iPad was sitting in a, a shopping cart basket, you know, in a place, in a position unapproved, not approved by Walmart staff. They do not, uh, they do not approve of you letting your child in the basket. The child yelled over and over and over again, big old iPad pro in his hands over and over and over again, yelled, mommy, 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 mommy. And she goes, and she's just completely just Zen. And she just, he goes, mommy, look, Sonic is pogging. <laughs> and I've had that just like completely burned in my brain for four years now. Mommy, look, Sonic is Sonic pogging. Sonic is pogging. Mommy, look, Sonic is pogging. <laughs> yeah. Oh but the, the emphasis God. on the pogging was so crazy. Sonic is pogging. This kid was like four years old. It's like they keep on – it's just like Republicans, right? Yeah. They just keep making new Sonic fans. No offense <laughs> yeah. to them. They just keep making them. This is where the Sonic Jesus fan art comes from. They don't know any other things. They know Sonic. They know Jesus. Sonic yeah. and Big J, JC. You don't, you don't want to be one of those uh, older folks who talks about the, the decline of civilization and things like that. But when you hear, when you hear Sonic is pogging from a, from a four-year-old – Four year old, yeah. It's it's a little hard not to 
for those th- those thoughts will encroach is all i'm saying as long as uh, we have sonic civilization will endure oh so, yeah that's he's true. our cornerstone yeah. sonic will outlast video games themselves he's yeah. part of the modern myth now our, yeah. our children would be in grave danger of spontaneous combustion were sonic to ever pog and floss at the same time Can, uh, is that allowed that child would have turned into confetti yeah, I'm, I'm worried about the power they potentially wield in this third Sonic movie if they can hold themselves back. From oh it. God, no! They got they got Shadow the Hedgehog in there, right? Yeah, they got Shadow. Yeah, that's gonna be cool. Wait, was he watching the Sonic movie? Shadow, no, the kid, the, 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 the child at Wal- the Walmart. Does Sonic child. Pog no. in, in Sonic Two? The, the Sonic floss in Sonic Two. This was uh this was July uh 2020. Okay. So it was almost exactly four years ago. It could have been Sonic Boom. It could have been... uh, Oh, it could have been Sonic Boom. It could have been a random gif He really wanted his mom to see that Sonic was pogging. (laughs) He should have gone over and just... Peered over his shoulder. You should have been like, "Now this, I gotta see." I mean, I don't, I don't have any children, but from what I hear, it's pretty nice. Um, but I've also heard that uh, uh, sometimes you just gotta let your child yell about something that's cool, yeah. and you just don't have to show an interest in everything because that means you know they're just gonna yell more. This is if I understand correctly. Maybe you don't want to go over and see Sonic pogging sometimes. Because if you go over and say, that's a very nice child, he'll find 48,000 more pictures of Sonic pogging. Yeah, this might not be the first time the child has shown their parent Sonic pogging. And then he'll he'll get so hooked on Sonic pogging, he will never learn how to read. <laughs> right? <laughs> The only letter he'll le- he'll recognize is O from the shape that Sonic <laughs> he'll, he'll recognize it. He'll recognize. It. I'm making the pogging face uh, exclusive yeah. uh, to this recording. Uh, yeah, backers, backers on the non-platinum uh, tier. Backers on the non-platinum tier with platinum uh, access, one thousand dollars a month gains you access to uh, camera feed uh, during the live recordings. All of us pogging. That's true. Every yeah, time so. you hear silence, it's us pogging out. <laughs> Yeah. Any yeah, anytime someone's not talking on the show, we're just doing a resting pog face. <laughs> Every time <laughs> I've ever accidentally pogged and then someone screen capped it and tweeted it at me. I look at it and I think, what a loathsome facial expression. <laughs> what an absolutely <laughs> horrible thing for a person to do with their lips. What are some of the most important written documents in video game history? Seanbaby.com. <laughs> 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 Lord, um, I, uh, <laughs> what a manifesto! <laughs> I was just looking at SeanBaby.com a couple minutes ago for a reason we need not get into. <laughs> IGN listicles from the early two thousands. In terms of uh, culture pervasion, that's not a word. Maybe the time to create article from Old Man Murray is. Oh yeah, is, I don't know if it's important, but it's we'll start uh, to create. Significant. Yeah, it's it's pretty good. Time to start to create. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's pretty good. I yeah, mean, it's, I mean, wait. You think it's not important? I think it's pretty important in terms of uh, actual. There, there, there was a there was a moment where uh, uh, critics established that maybe they knew a little bit more about game design than uh, some game designers did, and uh, that there was a, or at least cared more about it. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I think in his case, there was a little bit of new more uh, as well. It's a, it's sure. a, it's an interesting conflict. Yeah, I think I think that's a pretty good one. That's not really. I mean, we're not we're not we're talking about documents. You just say any text document. And this is basically we're trying to figure out what's the. Uh, you wanted to ask what's the Declaration of Independence of video games, but then you yeah, decided I to say did, yeah. of video games question for another one because you got something else. Is that it? <laughs> yeah. What's I the did, Gettysburg I, Address of video figuring. games? Is that what's coming up at question that's... number ten? <laughs> Um, um, I could host one of these. Oh, by the way, that Brandon's question. You're really busting my chops here. I still, I still, I preserve my token. Sure. Uh, but anyway, what's what's the constitute the Declaration of Independence of video yeah, games? Yeah, because my my first instinct was something like the script of the first Dragon Quest, which isn't, but that's not Declaration of Independence. Independency. That's just like something that was a, a, a prototype for everything else. Uh, yeah. That came yeah, after. and it's uh, it's also words that exist within the game. So that would be. Uh, that would be something like uh, feels uh, like, like a speech somehow. given on the a speech given on the campaign trail or a speech given to try to rally the people into fighting in the revolution. Mm-hmm. Whereas the Declaration of Independence is uh, mm, 
an assertion of one's rights, as it were. We have basically all we have these days that gets anywhere near the declaration, the power that Thomas Jefferson must have felt, uh, you know, calligraphying out the words, we the people in extra huge font. The closest <laughs> we get to that is uh, advertising slogans, right? So Ooh. Nintendo, now you're playing with power, right? I think it would be, have to be something like Genesis does yeah. what Nintendo don't. Mm. Oh, it's yeah. in the game. Yeah. It's oh, in the, it, yeah. I think it's in the game is uh is too is too late. Yeah. I feel like well, I mean, because originally it was if it's in the game, it's in the game. EA Sports, and it's like that's just a it's a good one. I think it really could be uh, Genesis does what Nintendo don't because Sega did sort of lose that console war, much like America is losing its independence. In this uh, year of twenty twenty four, so it sort of fits. Yeah. So yeah. What's I don't like how that cast Nintendo is Britain though. Oi, oi, gov. They did publish Snake Rattle and Roll. So I mean, Cobra Triangle, RC Pro Am, Slalom. They published some Brit games, bro. Some big time. Yeah, I Brit guess that's games. true. You know, I can't argue with that. They they did publish some. Yeah, I, I kind of buy Genesis does what Nintendo. I think Kid Icarus yeah. is basically an, a Brit game. <laughs> If you've ever played like Nightmare or Saber Wolf, it's basically Kid Icarus. Kid Icarus is ZX Spectrum Core as heck. What about like patent documents? Oh, uh, like the no playing oh, games yeah. on the load screen one? Those are pretty terrible and do kind of represent America in a lot of ways. Um, so like the the patent for the D-pad. Oh. The yeah. plus key switch. The plus key switch. What's the deal uh, with that one? Nintendo has it. They patented the 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 plus D pad, and and that's why, oh. like for example, the the Genesis one is a disc, and the I did yeah. not know that. Wow, that's so stupid. Yeah, PlayStation has the middle gone yeah, from it. The, the D pad feels like dog bonkers on every non Nintendo console because of that patent. Yeah, yeah. the uh, the PlayStation has uh, their like. Legally required to refer to their D-pad as the directional buttons. That's their naming convention for it that they use to this day. They call the D-pad the directional buttons. You know someone is a narc or a paid shill if in their YouTube video they refer to the PlayStation controller's D-pad as the directional directional buttons. buttons. Yeah, because uh, (laughs) I only know this because I had to legally call them the directional buttons as an employee of Sony for several years. Wow. I had to. They forced us to do it. I had a friend who worked in the naming conventions and standards department, and uh, she was very militant about this. Like she, she would make sure that me and my friends, when we were talking about PlayStation games, she'd be like, "Did you just say D-pad? What did you say? <laughs> what did you say?" This sounds like I'm making uh, some sort of absurd joke, but she did actually do this. Like at lunch, she would oh be like, God. "She would be like, are you talking about the 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 D-pad?" Did you just say the 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 what did you what did you say? And it's like, ah, oh, man, come on. So, did I hallucinate this, or did Nintendo acquiesce on the Wiimote idea? Because for a long time they were like, do not call it that. But then I feel like they kind of adopted it. Did they? Because I know that you know brands are, especially J brands, are pretty big on uh, loyalty to. Naming yeah. conventions and terminologies. It could have just been Nintendo of America, but let me yeah. see. NOA might have done I'm it. I'm Googling Wiimote official name right now. They might. Wow. They might have got chewed out a bit by Nintendo of Japan and then kept doing it. Actually, no, I don't think Nintendo of America would stand up to a single chewing I, su- I swear I saw it on an official communication somewhere, but maybe I made that up. All right. What do we got? Did you find it? It's the Wii Remote. It is the Wii yeah. Remote. Okay, yeah. so they they have never called it Wii Remote, or at least they don't. Wow. They don't. I, I don't know if they've never called it Wii Remote, but the official name is actually not the Wii Remote. So I haven't dialed yeah. up Twitter dot com in in like six days, but we're doing it. We're gonna look up Nintendo of America, uh, Nintendo America, and we're gonna have the word Wii Remote in quotation marks. Yeah. So I, I knew it was I knew Wii Remote was the official thing, but I thought there was a, a point at which they acquiesced and said Wiimote. Um, I, I wonder if it was like Reggie said Wiimote aloud. Reggie hmm. might have done it. Let me see. I feel like I've been living in a Bernstein Bears parallel universe because I've never called it the Wii Remote. <laughs> We've always called it the Wiimote. Yeah, I'm pretty it's, sure. Uh, we were calling it the Wiimote since like yeah. Twilight Princess 
uh, yeah. where I'm from. I, I've been calling it the Wii Troller. Which <laughs> is Sony, Sony headquarters, we were calling it that. I got a Kotaku article here with uh, Reggie saying Wiimote. Uh, yeah. where ah, someone someone asked got him. what was the most significant innovation in gaming in the last decade and he said it's got to be the Wiimote the Wiimote introduced a completely be. new style blah blah I guarantee god darn to you he got chewed the heck out for yeah, that probably like uh, even Reggie I don't even think Reggie yeah. had uh, chew out immunity that's probably why he quit they they, they pushed <laughs> him out for saying Wiimote he pounded his hands on his desk you ever see that interview with Pedro Pascal where he accidentally calls Grogu Baby Yoda, and he gets such fear oh, in his eyes. Oh yeah, and he immediately goes. He immediately goes. Oh man, they're gonna get mad at me for saying that. And then all the yeah. people are like, ha 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 ha. And then he's like, I mean, they really are. Uh, yeah. Uh. <laughs> and then and it's like, oh wow. First of all, what a, what a dude that guy. Uh, and second of all, yeah. uh, lol. Who's watching that Gladiator two in the theaters this uh, Thanksgiving? Uh, me. The color grading is gonna suck. What is he in that? Yeah, he's in there. He's all okay. the way in there. Yeah, he's the Gladiolorian. They got his, <laughs> his whole person in there. He's in there. All right. He's. He, I, well, I'm talking. To, that's a reference to the fact that his face isn't covered with a thing. Yeah, his whole body is in there. All right. Next question. If the Republic of Gamers, as it says on my monitor, Rug. was a real place, uh, what would its penal system be like? Oh God. You gotta play Superman sixty four. Uh, is what they call hard time. <laughs> um, is if, if you commit if you commit murder, you're you're uh, doomed to execution by too much Superman Superman sixty four. That's yeah. your execution. Um, I think you have to grind uh, like V bucks for someone else on someone else's Fortnite account. That's like the typical job that the typical person has is grinding. Yeah, that, that's that's the stamping of license plates. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to put in all the hours, but not for your own gain. Right. Not to buy your own cosmetics. You, that young prisoner, complete my battle pass, is what the guy <laughs> yeah. would say to you. Exactly. And you're locked out of all of the dancing emotes. <laughs> you have to use the basic skins. Unlock flossing for Baby Yoda for me now. <laughs> Unlock flossing Baby Yoda and pogging Sonic for me by tomorrow or die. <laughs> or I'll have your head. And I'll eat it. I was going to say, you can't leave sol solitary confinement until you can beat the, the stupid tube level in... Battletoads. <laughs> Battle Battle Tobies. Yeah. Uh, the toy the turbo tunnel. And and you they you don't get any food or water until the, you're just getting hungry and, yeah. and more dead. They don't call it solitary solitary <laughs> confinement is <laughs> called the turbo tunnel and it is <laughs> a wind yes! tunnel where they're just blasting wind at you and you have to play <laughs> Put them in the turbo tunnel. And you have to play Battle Tobies. Um, that's what I call battle toads. Three I, shots and you go in the turbo tunnel. I like purposely broke my brain into calling it battle tobies like 30 years ago. I can't stop. Um, you, you got to play battle tobies in a wind tunnel with no save states. <laughs> no. Um, and it's called the turbo oh, tunnel. Oh, Lord. That's right. And as soon as you get to the end, a little, like a, a number just increments in the lower left corner of the screen, like one, and then you have to do the whole thing over again. And that's all. You don't get to even play the fun levels of battle toads, which interestingly don't exist. Um, because <laughs> British people made the whole thing in movies about it. That you, you get people saying, oh, "I can't go back there. Can't go back to the turbo tunnel. Not again." Yeah. That's that's when they plan their escape. <laughs> can't go back to the turbo tunnel, man. Yeah, but interestingly, you can escape uh, by hiding under a big paper box, uh, cardboard box, and moving very slight, slowly and slightly. That is a way that you can escape oh. from the. Yeah, that's that's a real loophole the in there. the uh, system. They really got to. Yeah. Really got to crack down on yeah. mm -hmm. It's the legally sanctioned way to escape from prison. Mm -hmm. Right. They can't do anything. Your Honor, my client was in a box. <laughs> <laughs> or you can just pretend to be dead and you, you lie on the floor in the middle of the cell oh. and wait for the guy to come in because yeah. th he thinks you're dead. Yeah. Yeah. That's another way yeah. to get out. Uh, they're actually legally required if you don't say anything while lying on the ground for more than 30 seconds. They're just kind of required to let you out. <laughs> also, yeah. there's lots and lots of loose bricks in every cell. <laughs> so true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And there's also a, like a rug with just a trap door underneath it in every cell as well. If you can manage to grow a mustache, you can get out through the sewer pipes. Yeah. Yeah. Th there's no cafeteria. You just got to punch a chicken out of the wall. Mm -hmm. How do you end up in jail? Because I know murder has to be legal. And the Republic of Gamers will basically give any game a 7 out of 10 and you get thrown in jail. Yeah. I was, oh, yeah. yeah. That's the – A 6.9 or lower and you're, you're in I think there. it's all thought crimes. Yeah. The only way. If it's 7 out of 10, you're done. You know, I recently learned that in the world of like wine tasting – anything lower than a nine is considered garbage. Mm -hmm. Like it's even worse than video what? games. Yeah. yeah. Why? 
Well, you know how like in Olympic figure skating, like six is the highest uh, score you can get in a category, right? Am I, am I, I don't know. And then that. you notice that nobody ever gets like lower than a 5.4 or whatever. If I'm getting these numbers wrong, leave me alone, listeners. <laughs> right. But it's uh, you'll notice nobody ever gets. I remember being a chibis during my prison-like years as a valiantly bullied roly-poly chibis. I often re- remember um, as seeing a score of like a five point four out of six and being like, "Why don't they just? Didn't this guy fall like twelve times? Didn't she fall like fourteen times? Can't they just give her like a zero? Like?" And then I I realized, oh, they're all at the highest level. Yeah. Right. And they're all respected people. So they can't get lower than a score like this. So in other words, uh, kids out there thinking a game should never get lower than a seven out of 10. They seem to believe that if a video game comes out, it has reached the Olympics, basically. I wish that people yeah. actually believed that, though. It's kind of a miracle. They, yeah. It, it, would, yeah. it would be nice if they did really think that because... I, 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 uh, the closer I get to finishing this video game we're working on right now, the more I do consider the, the, the miracle of birth that is, um, an entire RPG getting finished. Congratulations. Oh, well, it's not done yet. Well. <laughs> Congratulate me in, uh, in it's six done weeks whenever you have. feel like it. Just right. press the button. Yeah. Just press the ship just button. Just put it out there. Well, you're, you're almost done. So I'll offer you most of the word. Congratulatio. Thanks. Congratulatio. That's the name of, uh, Pedro Pascal's character in Gladiator 2. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Congratulatio. <laughs> the name of someone from Final Fantasy 15. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, absolutely. Gladio's yeah. like, Deadbeat dad, his name is Congratulatio. Congratulatio. I, I had some cup noodles with that guy. All right. Well, we'll be right back after a quick break. The following ad supports the Insert Credit podcast, but is not necessarily endorsed by its individual members. This is the Insert Credit Quick Break. I'm Alex Jaffe, and this week's episode of Insert Credit is sponsored by The Houseflies, a very cool post-punk shoegaze alternative grunge goth rock band, releasing their first full album, Mannequin Deposit, on July 2nd across all platforms. I got to listen to Mannequin Deposit myself and had a very cool time. Right now you're listening to my favorite song off the album and their lead single, She Hums Mozart. Mannequin Deposit will also be available for download or on vinyl at wilhelmsons.com. Check out She Hums Mozart, Mannequin Deposit, or even the Housefly's 2022 EP Glimmer as soon as you're done listening to this episode. In fact, pause the episode, do that now, and chill out with the Houseflies as our musical interlude before we bring you back to the dirtbag. Get buggin'. Welcome back. To insert credit, it's time for us to go to our listener mailbag. Uh, this is the point of the show where I take a question submitted to me uh, through the avenue that is patreon.com slash insert credit, where for mere dollars a month, you can get access to the link that lets you submit questions. Uh, you get monthly bonus episodes and other interesting surprises that are sure to delight. This week's question comes from The Fragrance of Dark Coffee, who asks, FDC. When and where would you set a Yakuza game in the United States? Let's assume we can't say Oakland in 2012, since we covered that in previous episodes, or Hawaii in 2023, which Sega already did. This is like a basic bitch answer, but 1920s New York, a hundred percent. Which part? Though? More than Chicago? Which, which neighborhood? Though? We have to pick a neighborhood. Midtown. Midtown Manhattan. Times Square. New yeah. York. Man- Times Square Manhattan. Yeah. Back Ooh, when no, it was- uh, the Lower East Side. You, you got to have access to a Chinatown is my only- um- Yeah. I think it should be the Lower East Side. Yeah. Lower East Side is proximal enough to Chinatown that you could uh, you could stretch it. You can have yeah. it be as you can have it be Sao How. I call it Sao How to not confuse it with Soho. You call it London. that? Yeah, because it's it's south of Houston. South of Houston. <laughs> call it Sao How. Yeah. Come on, it sounds better. I think Cosmic Curious should still be the protagonist in the tradition of like Yakuza spinoffs that aren't set in the same era. Oh yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. He plays the protagonist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like much as he does Sakamoto. Ryoma. Maybe he's a white guy, but they never comment on it. No, he could be a he could be a Japanese dude in uh, in pre-war. New York. I think they could mm-hmm. work that out. 
Yeah. They could work that out. He could he could say stuff like, my uncle was a samurai before they were disbanded. Oh, yeah. Because it would be 1920-ish. That's right? good. I'm remembering now, actually, it does make sense because in some of Hemingway's letters or like in a, memor- a movable feast, he's writing about um, these Japanese businessmen who are friends with Ezra Pound. And he's like, God, they're so cool. Look at these cool guys with their long hair um, who are in Paris in the 1920s. So I- I could see Wait, what about an Paris enterprising 1920s? Japanese businessman such as Kiryu coming to New York in the 1920s. You can't do Paris in the 1920s because the question is uh, branded. Oh, the America. Is, is America. Yes. Yeah, I yes. forgot about that. But right. because <laughs> it happened in Paris, I could see it Paris, happening Texas. here. Yeah, yeah. It, because, it happened, yeah <laughs> because it happened in Paris, I believe it was also happening in New York. It has exactly. To, it has to have been. Has and to they used been. to right. do like tours, like wealthy New Yorkers or like not just New Yorkers, like wealthy people would be given like tours of the New York City slums in the 1920s. They'd just like go around and, you know, you'd point at all the like drug dens and tenements and be like, look, here's how people live. Um, yeah. There's just a lot of weird stuff happening uh, back then. So. I could see a, a a sort of a Yakuza game set in 1970s Times Square as a thing. Oh, that'd be so mm-hmm. cool! I could see that a hundred percent, but I could also see. I really do. Kiryu's already a taxi driver. Yeah, exactly. I I really yeah. do think about that, that. Uh, sort of nineteen twenties, maybe even late nineteen tens, or you know, I'm post World War One, Lower East Side, Five Points area. If you've ever read the book The Gangs of New York or seen the film Gangs of New York, um, there's a lot of there's five points, the five landmarks, uh, roughly in uh, Tribeca. Soho, Chinatown, Lower East Side, like that whole area, I think is is rife. If you've ever walked around Chinatown in New York, Manhattan, which I think a few of us on this podcast right now have, um, mm-hmm. there's a lot of those old historical weird areas. And then it would be fun to just see that in the 1920s, I think would be pretty good. I'm going to make a little side bid. I do think this is probably the, yours is probably the better answer, but um, I think there's a solid case to be made for a Yakuza set in Las Vegas, maybe in the maybe oh in the fifties uh, ish. Oh, yes. Yeah. I think Las yeah. Vegas in the the Howard Hughes era. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There's just a lot of natural fitting stuff there. Rat Pack with, era Las Vegas. Yeah, one thousand exactly. percent. Mm. When they all have their like casino residencies, and the yeah. casinos are all owned by mobsters, like forties, fifties. Yeah. Kiri, you can play a guy who is. Or is getting is going to go kill this Frank Sinatra style singer dude mm-hmm. who got his uh, grandpa uh, interred in a in a camp during World War II where he died uh, or something like that. You make it about uh, extra dark, yeah, dude. This is making me wonder if like GTA is America's Yakuza. Oh yeah. Well, when, when yeah. the first uh, uh, Yuga Gotoku game came out in Japan, uh, Western critics almost universally referred to it as Japanese GTA, wow. which ended up kind of destroying its reception when it was eventually released because so many so many Jibbuses purchased the game and and were like, "Why can't I steal a car?" And <laughs> why can't I steal no cars? It, it did that in the opposite direction for me, where I. Also heard it called that, and I didn't yeah. want to play it because I was like, eh, I don't need that. Here's a, here's the big brain option is uh, I knew that people who worked on Shenmue had worked on it, and I like GTA games, and sure. I was fine with whatever they did, and I they're my favorite games even today. Thank you. I'd like to make a proposal of 1933 Chicago. Oh. Yes. You've got the end of the Prohibition, you got the World's Fair. And you got like a serial killer who can be a boss with eight health bars. Yeah. Yeah. There's not, not enough yeah. neon in there for me, but uh, it's, it's, it's okay. They were crazy about neon in the 1930s. I don't really acknowledge anything outside of the coasts of America, as, as you may know. Right. Uh, oh, yeah. You are a coastal. Elite. Uh, where's Las Vegas, by the way? <laughs> it's close. <laughs> it's real close to the West. It's it's like you you drive uh-huh. a little bit and you get everything's there. close to the west in an airplane, man. Yeah, <laughs> I think there's all there's already Fallout New Vegas though, so it's like, do you really need too much more Vegas? And also, I do. Yeah, I mean it's yeah. it is true. If you make yeah. it a god darn, uh, the Frank Sinatra is the bad guy, or a guy based closely on Frank Sinatra who's a mm-hmm. singer who's also an organized criminal. 
uh, who's also a gambling cheat or whatever. I think you can have a lot of colorful characters. That's a tasty one. But also, I wanted to point out, because someone's going to tell you this, Jaffe, the World's Fair in Chicago, uh, the, from the the book Devil in the White City, which famously has the serial killer in it, that was the 1893 World's Fair, not the... Ah, yeah, that's what I meant. Yeah, so if you oh, want to wow. do 1890s Chicago, ah, that gets a little different, but that's also a, ah, that's a similarly fascinating setting. But that might be just like a, a different... I think you might want to make an immersive sim. You might want to call Ken Levine up for that one. <laughs> Because that guy, <laughs> that guy knows what he's doing. Uh, I'm, yeah. I'm also just, I just need to point out for for Vegas that, that the entirety of Nevada is to the west of the easternmost point of California. Yeah, yeah. Just, huh. just it's, to it's say, it's a notch. It's a notch in California. There, there's a yeah. notch in California that goes <laughs> east of the ent- whole state of Nevada. Are you okay? So you're saying Las Vegas is Nevada. Or Las Vegas is California on a technicality. I'm saying that Las Vegas is is west on a, te- a technicality. Since California is unequivocally west, I, think, yeah. I feel like you said the words coast to me. This is getting to be a certain <clears throat> sort of thing. True. I just want to, you know, just I don't. First of all, I need to. We need to pause for a moment. To, I would like to implore the listeners: give me no guff about this. Uh, I didn't god darn say it. I I also think maybe Brandon could check out some of the other states. Because uh, I've been all around the world. Well, I was mostly making a joke. I've about been. That. I, know, I know you were, but okay. I've been. But oh, like people sure. don't know that, Carl. I've been god darn everywhere. And let me tell you something: the middle of the country is the real America. No offense. I live in New York, Manhattan, on purpose. I've lived in California. The middle of the country is the real place. Like, no offense to the other places. There's, there's, uh, I, we don't have time to get into this, but uh, I believe that. That's why I don't live yeah. there. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's nothing wrong with I don't me. need no real America. Give me the fake stuff. Do you ever <laughs> heard of no amber waves of green? Why not put yourself into a community where your vote matters a little bit more? Like, et cetera, et cetera. I don't know, man. Who cares? That's, Who cares? That's a good segue into my next Who question. Cares? Is democracy good for video games? Um, what, what has democracy done historically for video games? ESRB. Oh yeah. ESRB. Yeah, I guess. Well, I think it's good for video games because they, uh, they're not, they don't get just straight banned. There's a process involved before the banning and before the, uh, the way, and, and there's a process for the ways in which they are, uh, limited or, or exalted or whatever. So I, I'd say overall, democracy is good for video games because in in China, of course, it's it's kind of top down in terms of what video games can come out, and uh, and and nobody has a say in that. And that's, uh, but I don't know. I thought I thought we were talking more about the concept of democracy, like how uh, the people yelled until they changed the ending of Mass Effect Three, like things. Oh, like that. that kind. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Well, about that too. kind of democracy, d- democracy is maybe not that good. <laughs> <laughs> Turns out the people don't understand. No, uh, but they added back the vagina bones to Stellar Blade. So VBs. That's true. Oh, did they? Wait, did they? I thought they had vagina bones. Do, do, Imagine do, caring do. about that game like at all. That would be so weird. Could you <laughs> like it'd be so weird to like think about that game? That's 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 it. Really. Is that it, it? Let's all just think about Stellar Blade for a second right now. I'm pogging. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine pogging while thinking about that game. Oh my god. <laughs> Mommy, Stellar Blade is pogging. I can imagine no more lugubrious an occasion for pogging than whilst considering Stellar Blade. <laughs> Let me tell you. <laughs> That would be my last pog. I'd cold turkey on pogging after that. But yeah, if like if re- if review bombing is the is the idea of democracy that we're talking about, then uh, I'm I'm not as not as on board. Yeah, with that's that. part of it. What is activism if not review bombing the world? Though, yeah, right. So true. A lot of times you're just inertly screaming upon deaf ears. Yeah. Right. In this Leaving world. negative reviews upon deaf ears. Yeah. yeah. Like the, basically, the guys in charge can't read. So that all your negative, they don't, they can't read numbers even. They didn't even get that far in grade school. That's, that's how, that's, I'm talking about rich people here. Rich people can't yeah. read. We know this. They were busy developing their unique voices. Mm-hmm. They can, right. they're, they're developing their, 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 oh, I'm going to talk in uh, like this. Right. It's like, what, this guy's like, his mom is like, what's wrong with you, Johnny? Stop that. Oh, mom, I'm going to talk like this and I'm going to be the president. Like, oh, you're nuts, Johnny. What's wrong with you? Eat your oatmeal, right? 
That's Johnny for you. Yeah, that's, you know, rich people. John, John. That's Jonathan, Jonathan, John Kennedy Jr., John F. Kennedy. Yeah, that yeah. guy's. John, John. Oh, that guy got wasted. No offense. Now, so dare. Yeah. That uh, guy found out. I wonder, that guy was pogging. I don't want to make fun of a guy who died in a plane crash. I'm going to die in a plane crash someday. So it, it's extra funny. Oh, I'm going to fall down a sewer grate. going to fall down a sewer grate. Who put out the lights, yeah. you'll say. Your final words. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, put that on my tombstone. But anyway, we, we all know rich people can't read, and that's their superpower. Because if you can't read, you don't know what your haters are saying They're online. Yeah. You don't, yeah. A, a, a broken clock is right twice a day. A rich boy who can't read is always right about his online haters, right? Mm. So mm -hmm. that's a superpower. That's democracy, Carl. Yeah, I guess review bombing is in the situation uh, of uh, that thing that people say and don't mean where they're like, I don't agree with what you say, but I'll defend to the death your right to say it. Uh, uh -huh, nobody that's uh -huh. ever said that meant it. But mm -hmm. I guess in the case of people having a voice, I guess we got to let review bombing uh, conceptually even, exist. Even, even not, it doesn't have to be as extreme as review bombing, like even somewhere in the middle. You know, there's guys out there who've been writing thoughtful critiques of video games, extremely mm -hmm. granular, meticulous analysis of of specific events and uh, elements and aspects of video games for 20 some years. You'd figure most games would just be real good by now, right? Yeah. You'd figure, you'd figure, and you'd figure they wouldn't be laying off all the people making the good games so that they can make AI NFT games, right? Mm -hmm. So you'd figure, uh, so I'd argue democracy hardly ain't done nothing. For video games what about the everybody votes channel oh yeah well they closed it down so voting yeah. on what the next splatoon splatathon is is that another democracy <laughs> in video games did you like how i referenced splatoon the one guy who messaged me four days ago asking why i never <laughs> talk about splatoon on the insert credit podcast in australia you think they call it splatoon oi because Splat the, splatoon they say tattoo tattoo Tattoo. Hmm. I know in the UK they say splatoon. 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 You play that splatoon. I, I feel like they would say splatoon in uh, in Australia. Splatoon is like the worst video game name. That's also really clever. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that neat? Yeah. It's got an onomatopoeia in there. It's got the word platoon in there. You think <laughs> about Vietnam. You also think about like comic books. And splatting. Yeah. Here's a question for you. What is the most American video game? Mommy Ooh. Sonic is splatting. Is, uh... <laughs> most American video game. Uh, Sonic 2006. <laughs> where Sonic marries a, a, a child and then they have a, a, a hedgehog yeah. human hybrid child after that. Right. What? And then uh, Sonic holds up a document showing that this happened in a state where the age of consent is 16. Right. So it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> Mm. That's the most American video game. <laughs> yeah. Sonic 2006. I don't know. It's probably a GTA, even though it's not made in America. Those games are Scottish, mate. I know, but they but they they are to me they're very yeah, What's more American than a game not made in America? Yeah, Pizza I, is the ultimate American food. I, th I think uh, well, hamburger. What about burger? Those are made in hamburger. Berg boys. Yeah, those are made in hamburger. Those are made in hamburger. You a burger boy or a pizza baby? <laughs> no, we we <laughs> invented <laughs> burger. Absolutely. That's yeah. our thing. American hamburger is, in fact, a thing. The Hamburg uh, version is uh, yeah, not it's different. quite this. Uh, it's a hamburger sandwich is actually what you're supposed to, the original phrase for it. Whoa. Yeah. Because it's a Hamburg steak on a bread. If you've ever been a, a person who looks like an American in Japan and had like someone point yeah. at you and say, America, hamburger, yeah, uh, yeah. Th then you know <laughs> hamburger is the, God, I think they're, they're so they're so saturated with tourists uh, and uh, and uh, working holiday yeah, you visa don't get that goers anymore. now that I don't believe it happens anymore no, uh, it's or at it's least over. not at the volume it did before but I think if I you go into asked, the Deep into the boonies, you can get it. I would be asked, do you like hamburger like four times a day for 10 years? Yeah. So I've had a lot of time to think about this question, and I still don't know, really. <laughs> <laughs> I, still, I still haven't decided do I like how hamburger? I feel about hamburger. Do you like hamburger? Old man asks me, and I'm like, oh, shall I indulge this elderly individual? Old woman asks me, shall I indulge this elderly individual with my answer of I don't know? Uh, a group of like 12 schoolgirls uh, giggle, and one of them runs over and asks if I like hamburger. And I just say, no. And then uh, for the rest of her life, 
uh, she just thinks all foreigners are insane for not <laughs> yeah. liking hamburgers and also being very blunt. Simone, what's the most American video game? I So building on previous theories that Las Vegas is the most American place, mm-hmm. is it Fallout New Vegas? FNV. Fallout New Vegas is good. Yeah. Before I started talking about do I like hamburger, I was going to say Bioshock Infinite as sort of a joke that's sort yeah. of serious. And it's then got parlay that. It. Parlay that into uh, Fallout New Vegas. Well, I mean, I think with the misunderstanding of history, uh, yeah, yeah, it works pretty well. Bioshock Infinite absolutely does work very yeah. well for encompassing lots and lots of different flavors of Americanism. As I have observed earlier in this very episode of this podcast, the middle of the country is most of the country. It's the real place. So, in order to define the real America on balance. We'd have to take into account all of those uh, uh, wrong-headed ideas and such swirling I, around in a. There was a time when everyone yeah. thought Bioshock Infinite was a really good idea, and it got, uh, I believe, a ten in reviews from Polygon.com. And as the mm-hmm. years have yeah, gone the on, grand American and America experiment. has matured. We've realized that perhaps it wasn't such a good idea after all. <laughs> it was never regarded as good or interesting by me, and I wrote them one negative review on the whole internet that went up around the same time as that Polygon one, and I got roundly yeah. yelled at. But today, I am celebrating. History has vindicated you. Today I am celebrated. No one remembers Polygon.com, but they all know YouTube.com slash action button with its seven videos. Uh, Yeah. Uh, I will say to Simone's original point that I recall a recent interview with Todd Howard where he's like, we're never going to make a Fallout that's outside of America. It's the American video game series. So that's clearly what it's intended to be. Yeah, just absolutely, completely, randomly, out of nowhere for no reason. Last night we started rewatching the Fallout TV series over here. Um, oh, it's good Still because it because it, it felt like an American. It felt like a Fourth of July thing to do. And then uh, the the night before that, I I reinstalled Fallout New Vegas on my new PC. Which anybody who knows this, you have to click 148 things to install Fallout New Vegas. Uh, literally, like mm-hmm. it's not a joke. It is not. It is 148. I know the number. I'm not exaggerating. And then I played that a little bit this morning. So interestingly right. enough that we bring that up. So it's very fresh. That moment. might be it then. Oh, I, it, it certainly is. Yeah, it certainly is. Especially given, I mean, the the structure of it, especially the, like the late game structure where you, you have all these different ways of arriving at a, a conflict at the end of a sort of a revolutionary nature with multiple factions that think uh, each of which has like a different interpretation of what America used to be or what ancient Rome used to be. It's all very, very sublime. It's very intelligent. It's uh, one of the best games ever made. Um, and it just so happens to have been made right here in the United States of America. Wow. Not Scotland, not England, not even Ireland. Not Hamburg. Insert eagle scream here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. In- insert kestrel scream in lieu of eagle scream. You know how eagles actually sound, right? Somehow. They just oh, go. <laughs> how old was everybody when they learned that the eagle shriek is not an, from an eagle? Well, I saw a real one. Probably like thirty. <laughs> yeah, I think I was yeah. pretty. I, w- I think I was in my late twenties when I when I learned that. And and I wonder who was the person because one person did that for the first time. They were like, you know yeah, what? There was some sound engineer who was like, "This is yeah, this is sucks. More impressive. <laughs> yeah, this, yeah. Eagles don't sound cool. Cinema is all about larger than lifeness, you know. So sure. it's all about making sounds. That, I mean, why do why do closed doors make the sounds of doors slamming in horror movies? Right? Like, you know, there's they show a closed door and there's the sound of a door slamming. That's weird, right? Uh, you know, once you start thinking in this way, your brain just turn, you know, yeah, contortionalizes but it, it, and goblinizes. It's even weirder to have it just be a different bird. It's like when you, it drives me nuts when I'm, I, I'm yeah, watching a horror movie and there's like a wolf and they give it a jaguar sound or something. I'm it's like, a cooler, you, it's a cooler sound. Doing? They pick a cooler sound. <laughs> I, is anybody here, have you, has everyone here seen a bald eagle in the wild? Yeah. Yeah. I see yeah. It. Yeah. They're pretty cool. What's the closest yeah. you ever got to one? I was about four feet away from one once. Not that close. Oh, not in that the wild close. Or in as far as I could tell, it wasn't tagged from like a sanctuary or anything. And it just was perched on the tree right out in my parents' front yard in That's Fort Meade, so Maryland. That's cool. M- mere miles away from our nation's capital. And it's just, it's just perched there. And I'm just looking at it. I'm just like this. And it's just like looking around. 
You, you were know, just it's, pogging. It's a bird, ain't got no soul, yeah. right? So it didn't have like any sort of happy dog expression on its face. It's just looking around mechanically as though animated by chemical processes, right? Like just absolutely no soul it, whatsoever. Looking for something to eat. Much like America. Yeah. It's just, it's just. <laughs> much like America. It's, it's, it's head is just, it's basically, you know, just made of dead chemicals, but beautiful, right? And I'm just looking at it. And then it makes that little squawk. Chirpity, chirpity. My big brother comes walking around the corner and goes, oh my God, oh. dude. And then it just like flies away. <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, that's America. Come on. I, got, I, I got to stand there just like two body lengths away from a bald eagle for like a minute. Wow. And I was like, mm. this is cool. And I've never been anywhere near one ever since. It was 35 years ago. It's time to go to our lightning round. In this lightning round, we're going to play name design. This is a topic where I introduce the name of a thing, and you have to take away all of the cultural context you know about it and think about what a video game with that title would be like. Uh, this week, all of our names are state nicknames. Oh, very good. So I've taken state nicknames, and we're going to make video games based on each oh, other. I hope, I hope Big Sky Country is one, but keep going. Our first is Heart of Dixie. Oh, oh no. Okay, okay. So it's a. Uh, oh, it's like a really racist Sonic uh, original character, and it's a Kingdom Hearts game. Yeah. Uh, I, I was thinking it's just like a one of those Age Vampires games, except you, you play as the South rising again. I think it's like a Confederate flag patterned a Hedgehog OC. No, sure. I think it is a really poorly named RPG with an anime girl pr- protagonist named Dixie. Um, and uh, on the cover, she's like yeah. cupping oh, yeah. a glowing heart in her hands and her eyes yeah. are closed. And she's kind of like, there's light all You're thinking all like, her. like Shadow Hearts or Sakura, Ta- uh, Sakura Tyson 5. Uh, and it's sort a dating of, uh, dating sim, I think. Yeah, yeah and she's like 14, yes. but her boobs are just rocketing out of her Rocketing body. out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Bazoom. The Last Frontier. Oh, that's California. Oh, that's sort uh, of a... Mars colonization game. Ooh, that's good. Pluto yeah. colonization game. Let's go bigger. Sure. Oh, that's good. Why not? Pluto. Neptune. Land of Lincoln. Oh, my God. Land of Lincoln. It's, uh, See, it's, just, the, the problem with this game is I know what states all of these are, and I'm just like, I'm just trying to think of something in that state. This is actually a, it's a music game about, it's Lincoln Park, so much like Beatles Rock Band. This is the Lincoln Park uh, oh, yeah. rock band game. It's called Land of Lincoln. And you, you play as the members of Lincoln Park, like going to gigs, and then at the gig, you do like a, a rhythm game uh, to play the, yeah. the songs, and you unlock uh, different albums throughout their career. Oh, that's very Thank good. You. And in between gigs, it's like a 2D platform yeah. where you're kind of jumping from one venue to the other. Sportsman's Paradise. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Th- th- this, is a, this is 100% a Majesco-published Wii Sports knockoff but for, for the like Wii. like clay pigeon shooting or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Like, like, like really sort of like vaguely rich person sports. Mm-hmm. I think it's a contemplative narrative game where you play as like you're in heaven, you're a dead uh, famous athlete, and you're kind of yeah. reflecting on your life. It's OJ Simpson, you're saying? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're OJ Simpson. <laughs> OJ Simpson. OJ Simpson in heaven, canonically. He's, he's in heaven, but then suddenly he realizes. <laughs> well, you know, he, okay, okay. Seriously though, can we just like like I don't want to I don't want to be like mean about this, but OJ Simpson is in heaven because he was acquitted. <laughs> of murder by a court of law in the United States of America, which is as good oh, that's as right. a yeah. pardon by God. That's okay. Right. <laughs> so it is one nation under God. Guys in heaven, man. Deal with it. Yeah. He is having Legally. a good time up there starring in his own <laughs> video game. Land of Ten Thousand Lakes. Oh my God, Minnesota, dude. Uh it's a fishing game. It's a game where you play as a you 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 play as a loon. <gasps> oh. The the state yeah. bird of Minnesota. The most beautiful bird in America, actually. They make a funny sound. I like They make them. the best sound. The best sound, Carl. <coughs> if you've ever heard them, just a, a hyena izing all over the place yeah. late yeah. of a night, um, it's beautiful. It really reminds me of my Minnesota home when I recall the sound of a loon. I'm not from Minnesota, though. I, I think it's a, I think it's a fishing game, and uh, but it's like a procedural. It's like the No Man's Sky of fishing. So you oh, can, oh yes, yeah, 
You can, I like that you can a just lot. fish in all kinds of different biomes and locales and pond sizes and lake sizes and whatever and and you just you just go around and you're like oh look at this lake oh what do we wonder what's in I here I think it could be a, it could be a contemplative uh, uh, adventure game where you're a detective trying to solve a murder in, sure. in Minneapolis Minnesota of the uh, 1940s or something I don't know could be something like that I don't know be found with it the old dominion Oh, oh. It's like a Souls like. Uh, I'm thinking ca- like Castle Builder kind of. The old Dominion. Medieval town sim. It's a it's a Castle Builder where then you play a Souls like through the castles that you build. Yes, you build the medieval <laughs> oh, town, yeah. you get it all functioning, and then you have to go in and yeah. Have to go in and, and it's Chronicles of it. Dungeon Maker, but it's a Souls like. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. Chronicles of Dungeon Maker is so good, dude. Uh, the Licentious Republic. Hey, licentious, what? The Licentious Republic. The Licentious Republic. Which state is that? Ooh. Everybody guess. Uh, I have no idea. I have no idea. I got no clue. Is that here in, in God's America? Yeah. It's not like Canada or something? No, there is a state that is called the Licentious oh, is Republic. It, is it Rhode Island? It is Rhode Island. Oh. Rhode Island. Wow. Huh. Uh, it doesn't make any sense. I'm, I'm going to admit something here. I don't know what licentious means. Licentious. Uh, so I'm going to look it up. It's like lewd. Yeah. L- like lavicious? That's what I thought it L- meant. Lascivious? Promiscuous oh, it and yeah. unprincipled in sexual matters. Well, look at that. Yeah. What? Yeah. Licentious. Yeah. Uh, Rhode, Rhode Island, Island is the sexy state. It's, a sort of a, uh, it's just a sort of a, a rebellious name that they gave unto their colony. Um Hot. We're sex havers, is basically what <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the licentious <laughs> republic. Uh, oh, God, that's got to be some kind of... Oh, you know what it is? You know those, like, Chinese mobile games where you're, like, in the emperor's harem? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Oh. I think it's one of those, but maybe you're, like, playing as the emperor and building your licentious yeah. mm-hmm. republic. I guess it wouldn't be a republic if you're an emperor, but you know, whatever. Right. And occasionally you can pull, you you can pull some some pins to release you know release the magma, some magma to yeah. to uh, turn into <laughs> rock and some water so your guy can get to a yeah. treasure. But I was thinking about Leisure Suit Larry in the Licentious Republic. A licentious Suit Larry, he'd love it. <laughs> he'd love it there. Yeah, he'd love it there. That Larry is a little too licentious. A little too leisurely too. Almost heaven. Ooh, oh, wow. West Virginia. O.J. Simpson. Uh, <laughs> O.J. Yeah. Simpson. No, no, again, it's not almost heaven. He's in heaven. He's all the way in there. <laughs> it's not just a pinky toe. Almost heaven would be one of those <laughs> Bioshock likes where it's... Yeah. There, there's like... Is this the game Kanye West made about his yeah, mom? Yeah, there's yes. like a big twist, but you but you know the, the big twist from the first... 30 seconds of, of the first cutscene. Yeah. yeah, the child is dead all along, sort of thing. Yeah, I'm getting like road tripping bank robbery game from Almost Heaven. Okay. Yeah. Driving across America. One last job. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Real America. I can see it. Yeah, 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 you're trying to do the the one last score, uh, which yeah. will get yeah. you to, to your, your version. You're going to go live in uh, Heaven, Massachusetts or somewhere, ah. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Forever West. Ooh. Oh God! I, f- I feel like that's a game already. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just a, it's just like a a a, a knockoff pirate cart uh, game of uh, American Tale Two Five. Wait, Goes this West. is Kanye West yeah. game. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> oh, I was thinking Adam West. Oh, love that guy. Oh, Adam uh, West, well, Batman. Yeah, just having to do convention after convention as Batman. So here's oh, yeah. here's what I think it is. Uh, Sony sees Halo Infinite, and they're like, God. We got to do something that we could keep alive forever just like that. Well, we got this Horizon, whatever, Forbidden Horizon West Forbidden game. Forbidden West, yeah. Let's make a game called Forever West, with just like Halo Infinite, and it'll be the best, just like Halo mm. Infinite. Horizon Forever West. West is the best. Yeah, Horizon Forever West. And it stars Kevin Costner. <laughs> yeah. I've got one last late minute addition oh, here. Yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, Big Sky <laughs> Country. <laughs> Big Sky Country, dude. <laughs> wow. The best state nickname. It is a good does one. Anybody, does everybody know what state that is? Montana, baby. It's Montana. It's Montana. That's one. It's everybody know that that one, right? Yeah, one I think that's knows. the one that people know. It's the best. It's mm-hmm. the best one. I think that's the only thing I know about Montana is that it's called Big Sky Country. Well, if you ever been there, you'd know why they call. It. There's about five, six hundred people that live there. Oh, there's more than that. But if you've ever been through there, you'll know why they call it that, dude. Because the sky is real big. It's got a big sky. Brandon can't big. go there. I'm not allowed to go there. Wait, aren't you allowed to go there? 
Because it's not on the not on the coasts. <laughs> the weed's not legal there. Is that why? <laughs> the, the, yeah. the, the, You'll the, never the coasts, see the big sky. <laughs> AKA Las Vegas, well well known coastal city. Uh, okay, big sky country. What? It's um one man's sky. It's just a, it's <laughs> ah! <laughs> a game where there's just there's just one guy and he owns the sky. That's not a it's not a game. I think it's a it's it's a game about like flying a, a rescue airplane. Sure. I don't know. Oh, here's what I'm thinking for Big Sky Country. Imagine Fortnite balloon fight. <gasps> oh, wait. I'm thinking about... Where it's a hundred people in the sky. That's so much better than anything other. I was going to say. What, what, wow. what about like a Skies of Arcadia type game where there, everything's islands, floating islands, and uh, and yeah. and so That's it's it's all sick, Big Sky too. Country because it's all floating islands. It's a country in the sky. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, big sky country, and the biggest country is uh, is embroiled in turmoil, and and you from a far flung island uh, are called upon to solve this issue in the biggest sky country. How does Donkey <laughs> Kong Country fit into this, though? Yeah, well, that's one of the islands. Yeah, Donkey Kong Island. You get there on yeah. Funky Kong's barrel plane, and then that's your vehicle for the. Okay, I don't care anymore. Pladoom. Yeah, that's yeah, the yeah. sound that that the uh, barrel makes in my brain. Well, that's the episode. Uh, Simone, I'm going to give you the victory because Fallout New Vegas is the most American Yay. video game. Congratulations. Nice. Wow. I'll talk to you off mic about uh, getting a question ready for next week's episode. But for now, does anyone have anything they'd like to plug or recommend to our listeners to engage in between this episode and the next? This comes out on July 8th, the most American day of the year. That's right. Uh, I, got, I got a few things. One, I got to uh, get, get on my apology tour here. Yeah, uh, here we go. Favorite segment, yeah. Brandon's apologies. I, I recommended um, the 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 yogurt Biblos, <gasps> and I said it yeah. was from some other country. It's from Le- it's 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 Lebanese yogurt. I said it was some other L country. I get the L countries confused. Okay, it doesn't make any sense to anybody but me. But that's true. Yeah, anyway, so you, uh, okay. Yep. Yeah, I confused. You just file them together. Confused my L countries. Uh, one little recommend is check out the Homebrew Games Summer Showcase 2024. That's something that I should have mentioned quite a while ago. But every year, some folks get together and make a summer showcase of all of the upcoming new games for old consoles. So like your NES, your your Game Gear, your Genesis, your Super Nintendo. Uh, there's a neat looking Virtual Boy game. Check it out. That's kind of fun to see just what what kind of ho- basically what homebrew games people are working on for for home consoles. One more thing, uh, m- maybe you all knew this already, but did you know they have uh, you can you can watch television on your TV now? You know about this? What? What? That's right. What are you telling me right now? I, d- I didn't. Uh, as soon as HD televisions existed, also basically as soon as I left my mom's house, I disengaged from broadcast television entirely. I did. I didn't look at it yeah. because uh, you know who needs it. But in the intervening uh, twenty-five years or whatever, uh, TV's gotten real weird, and now it's it's basically like it's like basic cable. It's like the early like the nineties early nineties days of cable. There's like a a channel that just shows sci-fi shows. There's a channel that just shows westerns. There's a movies channel. As of June, there's now a a cartoon channel that shows Hanna Barbera cartoons. It's basically the early stages of Cartoon Network. Also, there you can watch uh, NHK World Japan, which is a twenty-four hour, no commercials, English language, Japanese broadcasting. I learned about like sustainable clothing manufacturing and some a guy who made a biodegradable polymer. To I don't know. It's just like I'm watching TV. Again, because it's weird and it's kind of neat. So you can just, for your TV, you can buy a $20 broadcast, broad uh, like antenna thing, plug it into the back of your TV, put it up as high in your house as you can get, and you can watch weird stuff on your television. Uh, I never thought I'd see the day, but I'm, watch, I'm, watch, I'm watching the TV on my television. So I just thought I'd let people know about that in case they didn't know about it. They, you can watch it for free. There's there's five Vietnamese channels. There's four Korean channels. There's like seven Chinese channels. At least in a major metropolitan area, you're going to get that kind of stuff. There's 120 something channels that I have access to here in Oakland. Pretty neat, pretty weird. So, that's that's my recommendation for you. Ch- check out TV. <laughs> <laughs> 
Go watch TV. Yeah. Yeah. And specifically, if you can find it, I don't know if it's on VOD or something, but the NHK World Japan program, Rags to Riches, which is about sustainable fashion, is uh, super interesting. Super interesting. Check that one out. The end. That's what I got. Who, Who else has got something? I work for a gaming website that has a YouTube channel. (laughs) Oh, that's good. It's called Polygon, and we make videos, and we put them on youtube.com slash polygon. And my next one, it's not going to be up when this episode comes out, but I think it'll be up not long after, is about how apparently I've been playing Elden Ring wrong for two years. Oh, no. Two years. Do you you make the pog face during the video? I might. I haven't shot it yet. Maybe I should. Do you want me to pause? Do you have any videos for freaks and weirdos who don't play modern video games? Videos for freaks and weirdos who don't play modern video games? Uh, undoubtedly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I made a video about copyright law. Okay, that's a good one. That is kind of centered around uh, Gatsby Jam, which is an itch.io game jam that happened when Gatsby went out of copyright um, in 2021, I think, or two. That sounds right. Um, Sounds right. And there were a lot of like neat like little RPGs and stuff that came out of that, including Gatsby Jam, which is one of my favorite little free game or is it free did i pay money for it i can't remember um it's a rhythm game on itch it's called gatsby jam it is set to the the game creator reading uh, a passage of the great gatsby and you have to control the eyes and mouth of dr tj eckelberg as the notes come Ooh. down it's so freaking cool it's good and honestly it's moving yeah this is the kind of stuff i'm talking about you gotta check that out freaks and weirdos tj eckelberg huh you know, he's based on the mascot sign. I didn't mascot know opticians in New York. I thought he was based on Sonic. Sonic the Hedgehog. That's Dr. Eggman. Yeah. S- some call TJ Eckelberg the original pogger. <laughs> no, he was just eyes, man. Come on. Yeah. Pogging requires, <laughs> a, just... pogging requires a goddamn mouth, a full yeah. mouth. Is there a smizing equivalent to pogging? You're just pogging with your eyes? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't, I don't think you can do it. I don't think you can do it. <laughs> I'm getting uh, gravely serious here. I find this very offensive, you and I. <laughs> uh, everybody knows the pogging requires a mouth, Charles. I'm I'm looking at everybody uh, open their eyes real big. Uh, Doesn't in, work in an attempt. That's what we're doing. Yeah. Doesn't work. You know what no. you can do with eyes is you can you can narrow them. Yeah, you narrow them. Whoa. That's an anti-pog gesture. However, mm-hmm. yeah, one can't quite pog. That's with just how a pair we do it eyes. in the American West. We narrow our eyes and we ask whether punks feel lucky. If you find yourself narrowing your eyes a little bit too often, consider buying sunglasses for God's sake. That's a good recommendation. Yeah, I wear those every day. It's not my official recommendation, but uh Do you have an official recommendation? Um seeing as it's literally my job to describe the aspects of uh, what I like. Um are you asking me to do work for free? Because I don't recommend doing work for free. <laughs> I don't recommend. All right. I don't recommend doing work for free. Okay. But if you do uh, have to do work for free, make sure you have a really funny reason that has just a really delayed punchline that nobody's ever going to see coming. So. Oh. <laughs> All right. I'll, I'll keep that in my back pocket. Uh, save that for your. Save that for your tapes. I have got. A recommendation of my own, and this is what it is. Uh, I would like to recommend if you enjoyed this episode of Insert Credit or any episode, please rate and review our show on iTunes, on Spotify, on archive.org, wherever you can get it. Uh, you could also support us on patreon.com slash insert credit to pay most of the people involved in production of this show. Uh, if you'd like to sponsor our show with an advertisement or personal message, you could do that by contacting us at show at insertcredit.com. You could also join our community at forums.insertcredit.com or find us on youtube.com slash insertcreditshow. This episode is edited by Esper Quinn with music by Kurt Feldman and John Philip Sousa. I'm Alex Jaffe. I'm Tim Rogers. I'm Brandon Sheffield. And I'm Simone de Rochefort. And look, Mommy, Sonic is pogging! Hogging Sonic down here. Do y'all see him? LPS. Yeah. See him right down there. He's right down there. Yeah, I see him. You can just barely see his head. <laughs> <laughs>
His little face is there. Fogging up. We often say he has a sonic face. He does have Sonic face a little bit sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Resting Sonic Especially, face. Especially, he, he pogs too. Yeah. So Can't read my, can't read my. This god darn guy pogs. This little <laughs> dog pogs. 